Hey guys, so tonight I want to try a little bit of a new recipe. Um, you know, if this works out, I think it's going to be pretty good. But, you know, if not, that's one way to get rid of your uh, renter's deposit. Um, but anyway, one of the guys on the Game Boy Dis Discord had pointed out that he's been using some dyes to dye his Game Boys. And, you know, I figure, hey, let, let's try it out, see what we can get going. Um, so I picked up this iDye Poly, this specific is the pink stuff. Um, you want the iDye Poly one with the color intensifier, not just the regular iDye, even though this is a little bit more expensive. And I found that Rit Dye doesn't exactly work that well either, at least on uh, ABS plastics. So what we want to do, or at least what I want to do, I want to get my water up to temperature here. Uh, you can see it's fallen. I had it up to about 135 degrees Fahrenheit, and I turned the burner off because I wanted it to level out. And, uh, well, unfortunately, one of the problems with having such a big volume of water is it's it's kind of hard to keep temperature equilibrium because you, you, you don't know you don't know what's happening. You know, as soon as you turn your burner off, it's going to take a little while to start dropping, so you don't know exactly how much you want to turn it down or whatnot. Anyway, so um, long story short, to use this dye, typically you'll want to boil the water. In fact, that's even what the instructions say. Uh, bring fabric, to, add fabric, bring to boil. We don't want to do that with plastic here. Um, specifically, I'm going to be using dyeing what I believe is ABS plastic, or at least most of it is. ABS plastic has a melting point of about 110 degrees Celsius, which is just over the boiling point of water, so in theory we won't melt our plastic. However, excuse me, every formulation of plastic is a little bit different, so some might melt a little bit lower temperature, some might melt a little bit higher temperature. I don't know what temperature this stuff melts at, and I'm going to be using all different stuff, so you know, your guess is as good as mine. However, there's another issue. Just because the plastic doesn't melt doesn't mean it hasn't degraded enough to deform. Now, I did a little bit of research. I looked up uh, deformation points. Um, th there's a uh, there's another term. I, it's RIT. I forget exactly what it stands for. Um, or RTI or something. Uh, either way, there's something called the continuous service temperature of plastic, which apparently for ABS is anywhere from 65 degrees Celsius to about 85 degrees Celsius. That's the max temperature you can have it at before it starts, um, before the chem chemical composition, molecular composition starts degrading. So in this case, we don't want to get the water too hot because basically the plastic will soften, but the hotter the temperature, the higher the temperature is, the better this will work. Now, the buddy I've been talking to who's been doing this dyeing, uh, he's just kind of been winging it. He doesn't have a thermometer. So I went out, I figured, hey, let's try and get some actual data off this, see if we can figure out what works best, you know, crowdsource and uh, experiment, really. I went out and bought this. I thought it was dual in that it went, oops, Celsius and Fahrenheit, but apparently I was, uh, I was wrong about that. Anyway, 140 degrees Fahrenheit is about 60 degrees Celsius, and 176 degrees Fahrenheit is about 80 degrees Celsius. So the idea is we want to keep this between 140 and 172. However, I'm thinking let's start off at about 130 and see what happens from there. So it looks like my temperature has finally started to stop dropping. It's going up slowly, but it's going up. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and pull this out so I can start the actual dyeing process. And I'm going to pull out my uh, strainer here. And uh, just a heads up, you really don't want to use your good cookware for this. Uh, what I mean is if you plan on eating you know, cooking with this stuff, well, buy a different, go to Goodwill or something and buy different cookware. Uh, so supposedly you can just drop the whole damn packet in and it should dissolve. 
So we will do that. I, uh, I kind of fucked up. I set it down on something that was wet and I didn't realize. So there was already a hole and it already started leaking dye. But I think we should be good. There should be enough dye. I think... I haven't actually read through the instructions as much as I should have. But I believe the intention is that you use this with a much bigger pot. Because, I mean, unless you're dyeing socks or whatever, this is nowhere near big enough. This is also probably not the best use of a uh, thermometer, but whatever. Now, I've been told that you want to make sure you add the dye while, yeah, after this stuff is already heated up. If you add it while it's cold, it I'm guessing it won't dissolve properly. I'm just going to try and get all this stuff dissolved. I don't know. Give me a couple minutes. I'll be right back. Alright, so it's been about three or four minutes. Looks like it's all dissolved. I don't see any floaty bits around. And um, once you've got all your dye in there, supposedly you want to use this color intensifier here. I've heard it uh, I've heard it does something there to, I don't know, bring out the color a little bit more. I, I, guess, uh, I guess intensify, if that's a word. No, I'm kidding. But um, I'm going to try not to make a mess here. I'm going to dump that in. I have it on good authority that you want to get every last drop. But now I've got it all over my fingers and I don't know what the hell this stuff is so I'm going to go wash my hands. Alright, it's probably fine but why take the chance, you know? I'm going to go ahead and mix that up a little bit. So the gentleman that's been guiding me through this process, or, or, or lady, I don't know, I don't mean to assume, um, he said, they said, they get the temperature up to about where you start seeing the vapor rising. I don't know how well you can see this on camera, but that's about what's happening here. And according to the thermometer, that was about 125 before I lifted it all the way out. Which I'm guessing is about 55C, I don't know. Maybe closer to 50. I'll give you continental types this. Celsius is better for everything except weather. I think I still think that human relatable weather is better in Fahrenheit. Everything else, you get Celsius, though. I'll give you that one. That's just my way of saying buy a damn Celsius uh, thermometer. All right, it's probably good enough. Okay, so what we're gonna do here? I want to dye this Game Boy, and um, the biggest problem with that is that, well, I don't want to put this whole Game Boy in there. So I'm give me just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and take it apart. No, I'm kidding. I can't even do that shit right. But my channel is entirely too low budget for that. I just I have another shell here. Um, but instead of just dropping this in, I do want to spend another couple minutes talking. Um, turn that up a little bit because that looks a little bit low. Uh, I'm going to be using this strainer here to hold parts, but I also, I don't want to just try dyeing the shell. I want to try dyeing a whole bunch of other stuff. So what I just put in this strainer are a bunch of Game Boy Advance and Game Boy Advance SP buttons as well as one of these aftermarket clear shell covers. Um, I'm going to take the other half of that shell, drop it in there as well. When you're dyeing something in like this, assuming this works, you want to try and do everything at once because uh, the longer you have your stuff in there, the more intense the color is going to be. So if you're doing oh, shit. 
So if you're doing one part at a time, um, you know, it's going to be hard to get everything to match. Just, I'm going to pick up the camera here. I don't know how well you can see that. That's what splashed out. I, I think that's really interesting that that's the color that came out of that. But, uh, put that back. But I'm going to go ahead and drop this. Well, nope, not yet. I want to be able to rinse this off without dripping dye over every goddamn thing in my kitchen. So I've just got something to catch the splatter here. Alright, I'm going to go ahead and drop that in. And we're going to give it, I don't know, about 15 seconds and I'll lift it out and see what... Uh oh, that's floating. I don't want that to float. Oh, I probably should have been counting, huh? Bring up the clock on my laptop here. Oh, it doesn't have seconds. Okay, well, we'll wing it. You guys, since I'm recording, you know exactly how much I'm doing. But I've got my phone here. I'm going to assume it was already in there for about 20 seconds, so I'm going to pull that out here. Let's see what we got. So, the uh, clear shells have some sort of, they look just ever so slightly pink. The buttons aren't really where I want them to be though, so I'm going to go ahead and drop that back in. And we'll give that, should have had that up, give that another 30 seconds I guess. So, sorry, this is going to be one of those super fascinating videos. But hey, in the name of science, anything goes. Alright, let's see what we've got now. Oh, I should have mixed it better. That's probably not good. I can see already that this is getting this really cool pink tint. I'm digging that. The buttons look like they might need some more time though. So drop that back in. Oh, I know why, because it's sticking to the damn thermometer. There we go. I'm going to bump the temperature up a little bit. Alright, let me drop those back in. So I'm going to go ahead and rinse these off, Let's see what we got. So, the shell, this is pretty awesome. I'm going to let me use this as a backdrop here. So once we get focused on that, you can see that this kind of has like a pink tint to it. I think maybe we can go a little bit darker and it might look even better. But, yeah, screw it. We'll go darker see what happens. Uh, but I'm going to get those out of the way real quick. I don't know, it's not coming out real... Oh, there we go. I can see it. 
Whereas these ones, some of the buttons are starting to get a little bit pink, but like this deep, these D pads here. Um, well, basically the only things that are getting pink are the shoulder buttons and these weirdly all the shoulder buttons. And, uh, hmm. I don't know, maybe those just need more heat. I'll dump those back in. And this time, I'm going to let it run for about a minute. I'll be back in just a minute here. Alright, so it's been just over a minute. I'm going to let that sit and, uh, yeah, I think that needs more time. So. While that's gone, I just want to talk about my goal here. I have this Game Boy Advance that I built quite a while ago. This is just a replica of that Pokemon Center Latios Latias one. It's got the red back, blue front, pink buttons. And at the time I bought these buttons, I didn't know that they were kind of a limited DIY thing. And apparently you can't get them anymore. So there we go, now that it's focusing. So. I'm hoping to be able to recreate these. You can still get the start select, but you can't get any of the rest of this. Um, I did try a while back to try and paint my own, and these, they, they don't come out properly on camera because they're like fluorescent. I really love the color, but I just, I don't like the whole painted button thing, so I don't know. And uh, instead of using those OEM buttons, it might work quite a bit better to use these white aftermarket ones. I know it's kind of hard to tell what color they are, but you can see they're lighter than the original gray. And I did want to use these, but these are kind of expensive, and they, when they're actually installed in the console, they feel like shit, so I'm not digging that. Anyway, it's been another couple minutes here. Let's see what we got. So, oh, drop that again. So we can focus and sort of see what's going on. It's getting pink, but it's more of like a lavender. Not exactly what I was going for, but I'll let them soak a little bit more. Anyway, stick that back in there. And while that's going, we're going to try out an experiment here. This is just an aftermarket Game Boy Advance SP lens. I don't care so much for this thing at all, but I still want to see if it'll take dye. It still has plastic coating on here or covering. I want to see if I can tint this. I'm going to drop that in there. But I don't want to see just if I can tint it. I want to see if I can tint only part of it. I put that there, we can keep that in the frame. Hopefully I don't melt my phone. Okay. I'll be back in a minute, a few seconds, whatever. All right, so I hit the lap button when I went and took them out. It looked like the timer was at about 11.58. Um, this lens here doesn't look like it's doing much which is kind of a bummer, but maybe it just needs more time. Uh, now let's go ahead and take a look at the buttons. Again, it looks like all the shoulder buttons and the uh, this power switch here. This is an aftermarket AGB power switch. The rest of this is OEM. Uh, so it looks like I have one button. See, I don't know what the difference is. I don't know why that one AGS button died, but the other one did not. Um, Maybe this stuff just needs more time. I was looking at one of these AGB buttons, and you can see where... Ugh. Focus, you little shit. You can see, you know, where there's some scratches, some of the dies holding, but... I don't know what's going on here. So I think I might come back to these. Hell, I might just let them sit for minutes at a time instead of seconds. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and dump those out. Try here. I'm gonna stick this in, see what happens. This is an aftermarket game case. I 
just been using it as a test. I think I just lost one of my buttons, so that's cool. Okay, so now for the event that I'm sure you all came for. I can't stick this whole thing in here. It's really not big enough. Uh, so I'm just going to do one piece at a time. And hopefully it doesn't turn out too fucked up. Um, yeah, I guess I'll stick this back in there as well just to see what we can get. I'll stick that on the bottom because it's smaller. It should fit underneath pretty nicely. And we'll stick that back in. Probably should have flipped that over. something I wanted to try. They do make white games. I don't really want to dye this one because this one's, I don't know, I'm going to save it, but this would probably dye pretty nicely. Uh, I am, however, going to try dyeing this real fucked up case because I really don't care if this turns out pretty bad. It's already broken in the corner and the back's all discolored. I don't know what the hell's going on with that, uh, but I probably don't want to dye this. So, Take that out, and when that comes out, I'll drop this in, and we'll see what happens. I wasn't paying attention to the time, which is going to be really annoying. But this, it looks like, came out very nicely. Looks like that might need some more time, but oh man, that game case is coming out nice. And drop that back in. This thing also looks like it's retaining some dye. One thing worth noting. If you do decide to dye your case, keep an eye on your temperature. I didn't realize that was climbing up there. Um, don't forget to dye this part, this part, and uh, you probably don't want to dye this part. That's just a little LED light pipe, and these are the hinge covers. Um, I'll try dyeing this though anyway. What the hell? Science, right? All right, so I'm going to go rinse these off. These look very nice. I'm just gonna pause the video for a sec. So as you can see, my temperature's getting pretty up there, but this has some amazing potential right there. Um, it's got like just a hint of pink. Of course, leave it in there longer. It'll get even more pink. I have a feeling it'll take dye just the same as this case is taking dye. And this is turning out just absolutely amazing. I don't think the camera's doing it justice, really. Um, I think this is this is pretty damn nice. Otherwise, in here I've got recipe for disaster. This case can't see it pretty well, but it is taking the die can't tell you how long it's been in there because I didn't even look when I put it in. Sorry. But I can tell you it's been less than a few minutes. As descriptive as that is. And uh, while that's gone, try one more thing just for shits and giggles. This is just the little silicone pad for Game Boy Advance SP. And this thing isn't taking any dye whatsoever. 
which is, I don't know, I kind of expected that, but I'm still disappointed. I didn't care so much about the pink, but let me, let me paint a picture for you, right? I have a matte green Game Boy Color. Uh, it's basically, it, it's not like the dark green uh, forest camo color, but it is a, a, a green color that's used in camouflage. I was thinking, you know, you take one of those mirror Game Boy Color lenses, you uh, cover up the actual lens part, so you're just dyeing the periphery, and then you get some orange dye, and you get yourself one of those mirror lenses, and you can make one of your, like a gold chrome, think Halo, Master Chief. I think that would look pretty sweet. Unfortunately, I still have no idea how I can make that, but in the meantime, I can make pink game cases and uh, pink SP shell. Is that what's in there? No. All right, so let's check and see how this game's doing. Yeah, that looks like it's still retaining some, some dye. The silicone membrane looks like it's not having any of this. And uh, in here somewhere should be. Yeah, the LED light pipe, that thing is that thing is taking dye like a sponge. But uh, I'll go ahead and pop this back in there. Let that get some let that get some more dye and uh, I'll be back in a few minutes here. Alright, so I went ahead and stepped away for about 30 seconds, you know, check Reddit, check my email, whatever. And uh, see how these came out. I went ahead and dropped in another clear shell because I actually rather like this. I don't want to fuck this up. But I did drop in another clear shell with that original shell just to see how it would come out really. And uh, we're going to try a few more things here. I'm going to drop in this Nintendo DS shell. Uh, but only about halfway. It's broken so don't get butthurt that I'm ruining some OEM parts. Alright, so, the clear shell, very pink. I think this is about as dark as it'll go. I'm actually pretty happy with that. One thing that's worth noting is this is more of like a fuchsia than an actual pink. It's the back of that clear shell there. I'm pretty happy with this. This is, this is awesome. Uh, and this, of course, is the gray shell there. Interestingly, the discoloration isn't nearly as visible. And there's the front there. You can see the Sharpie marks are still there. I wonder if it's undyed underneath the Sharpie. But yeah, OEM shells do seem to die. I suppose, um, I didn't actually check, but if they have some green dye, that might, that might be pretty nice. You can make yourself a, uh, reproduction Pokemon green cartridge, even though they never actually made those, but you know, I don't judge too much. That's of course, if you only let it in for a few minutes at a time, whereas this was soaking for, I don't know, probably 20, 30 minutes or so. And, uh, there's the uh, button pad for reference. There's an undyed pad, so it looks like it did take a little bit of dye. Nothing really noticeable. I couldn't even tell until I put the two next to each other, but I don't know. Maybe let that sit overnight or something. Maybe it'll maybe it'll take. And uh, this here, that's the LED light pipe for the SP. That is, it's very very pink. All right. I'm going to try a couple more things here. This is a Game Boy Color shell. Uh, again, this one's broken, but for the sake of science, whatever. And I don't have a whole Game Boy Advance shell, but I do have this white aftermarket battery cover. We'll see how that takes. Get that in there. And by the way, the whole time that that stuff was in there, it was plus or minus 5 degrees of about 140 Fahrenheit. Let's see what this is doing. 
Okay, so yeah, that, that looks like it's taken some dye. The white parts, of course, are dying quite a bit more than the clear parts, but whatever. I'll leave that in there, see what happens. And I did take this out a while ago. It looks like it the it didn't take dye evenly. I think that's because there's some paint on this. I was trying out some glass paint on this to see if I can get it tinted. Uh, because, by the way, when I ordered these, clear was the only color available. Now there's like five colors, uh, clear, arctic, uh, or glacier, whatever, atomic purple, midnight blue, and then the smoke and extreme green. Uh, at the time I'm writing this, there is no pink, and uh, when I picked up this glass paint to try out, there was no atomic purple. That was the goal. That was what I was trying for. But now that there's atomic purple, I mean, just buy the damn shell. Don't even try bothering to dye it. Uh, but anyway, I think this only took dye where there was some overspray paint. I don't really know what's going on. It did not dye evenly at all. So don't plan on dyeing your covers. But in the meantime, whoopsie, looks like that battery cover's taking some dye. We'll let that soak for a little bit more, and I'll be back. All right, so it's been a few minutes here. Turn the thermometer on just so we have some data. So yeah, it looks like it's hanging around at about 135, 136, which is pretty cool because that's exactly where I want. I feel like that's a sweet, sweet spot where you get optimal application without risking warping your shell or your plastic here. I just want to show you what the DS shell is doing. So again, the parts that don't have the clear, the, oh, excuse me, I'm sorry. The parts that don't have the clear look like they're taking the dye a little bit better. And the parts that do have the clear. Drop that back in. And then the shells themselves. So they both look like they're taking dye. Let me, uh, let me dump these out here. So I tried dyeing OEM buttons here. Now I'm dropping in some aftermarket. Game Boy Advance buttons. These are brand new and unfortunately it looks like they're floating. And uh, hell, we'll put in the light pipe for shits and giggles. It's probably just an air bubble. Come on. Because B is not floating, it's just A. I don't know. We'll give that a few minutes, see what happens. I'm going to go ahead and rinse off these uh, parts. So the Game Boy color shell came out fantastic. kind of wish I'd dropped the back half in there as well. The uh, Game Boy Advance shell, or the battery cover, much less so. It's very splotchy. I don't know what the hell happened. I don't know if this is showing like defects in the plastic or the mold or something. Of course there's a sticker there. I didn't bother peeling off. But I, I don't know what happened there. I don't know. Drop it back in. See what happens. Can't make it any worse. And, uh, I don't know. I guess I'll... Well, this one, now that this is dried off, this looks very splotchy, too. Maybe that's just how the opaque plastics dry, or die, excuse me. So I was thinking, another cool thing, we have these clear Game Boy Color shells. Maybe we can make a cool pink model out of this. 
I think they already sell clear pink, but I, I have no plans on dyeing this, but I'm just saying, you know, there's an idea. Could be cool. But uh, I'll let these, let these soak and uh, I'll be back in a few minutes here. All right, so let these sit a little while again. Looks like the battery cover has a nice color. The buttons have a little bit of color too. I'm gonna go ahead and rinse these off and uh, see what we got. Oh, I need my drip prevention tool. Let's see what we got. I'm gonna go ahead and drop that in. And that, while I'm taking a look here, okay. So the DS shell itself it looks like the clear parts didn't hold on to any of the dye, but the uh, white parts did. I uh, don't know if there's much we can do about that. Again, this is OEM, so maybe aftermarket she uh, shells will take the dye a little bit better. But yeah, this is this is after rinsing, so this part is dyed right here and inside the battery compartment. That's about it. Uh, otherwise, if you look at the inside, the inside's all dyed, but whatever. Uh, the battery... Ooh, stay in there. Okay. Battery cover, again, very splotchy. Uh, of course, the inside is fine. I don't really know what happened. Maybe I just don't know what the fuck I'm doing with this dye, and maybe that's why I'm getting these results. But I'm thinking it has more to do with the battery cover itself, because my other things, like my clear parts, turned out so nicely. I don't know why the opaque parts are turning out this way. Maybe it's just showing all the imperfections in the plastic molding I, I, I don't know uh, but either way this color is fantastic I just wish it was a little bit more consistent that's not that's not the water you know let me, let me wipe this off so now that's mostly dry it's not that this thing was dirty either this was for the most part new so I, just, I, don't, I don't know what happened there Maybe your mileage may vary. Now these parts, these came out pretty nice. Again, the color is a little bit inconsistent. In this case, I think it's definitely due to the pattern of the plastic flow itself. Color's pretty cool. But again, you know, if it were a little bit more consistent, maybe it'd be better. I think I'll let these soak a little bit longer, see what, see what happens, you know. The aftermarket buttons seem to take dye a lot better than the uh, OEM buttons. Ugh, stay. Like, for example, that's an OEM button compared to the aftermarket ones. Screw it, I'll just throw them all in here. What's the worst that can happen, right? I can't put these back in just yet, though. So I just dropped in those RC wheels. Oh. Oh. I dropped that, and it went in between my oven and the counter. There's no getting that. That's unfortunate. Out of curiosity, though, let's see how these are doing. These are some old RC wheels. Can't really get them out here. There we go. Again, it doesn't look like they're taking dye consistently, but they are taking dye, so. Of course, I set that right on top of the other one.
whatever, I'll just let those float around in there a little bit. So, one quick note, I'm probably going to check in a couple more times, but for the most part I think I'm done with this video. Um, this die, it's not one time use, but the longer you use it, the worse results you get. Uh, so if you want to do something really good, do that first. Uh, but but I, by longer you use it, I mean like if you use it over the period of a few days, you know, on, on day two, you're going to get some really awful results. It's going to get splotchy and it's going to be inconsistent and you're just, you're, you're not going to be happy with the results. Um, but that being said, it's not specifically one time use, like use it once and one and done type deal. It's just, just be aware that when you use it, you buy the one pack, you use the one pack, and next time you want to die, you should probably look into getting another pack. Um, another thing I do want to mention, buttons do come in quite a variety of colors these days. It's not necessarily worth trying to die to get the colors you want when you can just buy them as they are. Um, the buttons themselves are about as much as pack of die costs so you know maybe keep that in mind but that being said I think you can still get some pretty pretty killer results with pretty minimal investment here uh, like I said that is only like three or four bucks or something like that I bought two packs I have this other one that I haven't even broken open yet this is the crimson die Eventually, I'm going to finish dyeing this clear shell here, and then, oh no, that's probably bad. Um, turn that off. And uh, once I'm done dyeing that, I'll transfer this SP over to that shell. Um, but otherwise, I'm going to go see if I can save my thermometer, and then uh, maybe I'll be back with some more updates. Alright, so I let some buttons soak for a little bit while longer, and I got some pretty interesting results here. Uh, I ended up just saying fuck it and throwing in those white buttons for my AGB that I had, and of course those came out kind of splotchy, but maybe I'll let these soak longer and see what happens. But I think it's pretty interesting, the, the color variations that I got. Uh, these have all been soaking pretty much simultaneously here. Some of them barely have any color retention whatsoever. Some of them are perfectly pink. These are the uh, the white buttons here. And just for a comparison, they're actually pretty much what I was going for. So I'm pretty happy with that. Um, so, yeah, if you want some pink buttons, buy some white ones and buy some pink dye. Uh, but then these ones came out kind of like a, a fuchsia color. These are the OEM gray ones, I think. It's hard to say. One of these is OEM, one of these is aftermarket, and one of these is uh, the other, one of the two. I don't know. They all look about the same color to me, though. So as far as these uh, side pa side buttons, side panels go, doesn't really matter too much OEM or aftermarket. Um, I think it's interesting. Like, these ones came out straight up purple, whereas these are more of a fuchsia. Uh, unfortunately, I don't know which is which. I'm sorry about that. Maybe you can tell by uh, the font on the buttons themselves. Let me try and focus that. I don't know. It's hard to... I can't really see what the camera's focused on. I'm sorry. There we go. Okay, so this purple one looks OEM. This one looks to be OEM. This one looks to be aftermarket by the font. Uh, and then, looks like all the aftermarket buttons took some dye, but the OEM ones didn't really, I mean, they kind of started to. I don't know. Maybe if I left that in long enough. This LED light pipe here, that, that took a lot of, that took a lot of dye. I'm kind of eager to see how that looks in a console itself. Um, same with that AGS light pipe right there. Up. That took plenty of dye. 
Uh, I don't know. Unfortunately, the AGS buttons didn't take any die, really. Except for the shoulder buttons, which are just straight up purple. Or lavender, I guess. I don't know. Came out kind of interesting. Oh, the wheels. Took those out a little while ago. Those are a nice pink. Uh, I'm not really sure what the hell's going on here. These are new wheels. They're not dirty. I'm not sure if it's a defect in the plastic or just the die itself. Maybe I'm doing something wrong. Either way, I mean, I can still paint them, but they're probably fine. Probably use them as is. Again, this has been drying for a while. This is completely dry at this point. This came out pretty nice. I'm happy with that. A little bit of a streak, but I think that's just... I think it's still wet inside, and that's just a little bit of fog or something. Here's the darker one of that. This one came out very nice. I think with a label, this thing will look amazing. Don't really know what to put in there. Oh, you know what? Let me, uh... Just so we have a baseline here. That's what it looks like with a PCB in there. I think it's pretty cool. And, uh, what the hell? Just so we can see both of them, because this one's a lighter, lighter pink. This one looks better, I think, with the PCB. It's pink enough that you can see the pink, but also clear enough that it doesn't make the PCB look kind of gross. Um, but otherwise, I think I'm going to continue dyeing this, try and finish this up, and uh, call it a night. So, uh, thanks for watching. I'll probably, I don't think I'm going to post an actual update when I finish dying this, but maybe I'll post a picture or something in the description. Uh, otherwise, if y'all have any questions, uh, hit me up, let me know. If there's something you want me to try to die, if I have it, I'll be more than happy to try it out, see what happens. Um, assuming I haven't gotten rid of this die yet, I do plan on keeping it as long as possible. But, uh, otherwise... Thanks for sticking with me through this longer, I guess, probably boring video, and uh, have a good night, guys. And yes, by the way, I really have been working on this for two and a half hours. Uh, well, probably closer to three if you count all the time I spent preparing and cleaning and all that stuff. Anyway, nonetheless, I digress. Have a good night, guys. Thanks. Just a quick addendum before I call it a night and uh, get ready to upload this video. I'm pretty much done dying with this batch. Uh, I don't know what else I'm going to do with it, so while I let it cool down, I'm just going to let these membranes kind of soak in there. Um, well, pretty much till I get up tomorrow morning, so these things are going to be soaking, uh, well, for quite a while. I don't know. By the time I actually go to bed, you know, after watching Netflix, get up in the morning, whatever, these things are going to be soaking for like 12 hours. Granted, uh, in a few hours, this water is going to be room temperature, but it is what it is. Uh, I do just want to point out, though, that the entire purpose was to make this shell this color, and uh, it came out pretty much perfectly. Um, but one final addendum I do want to make, uh, of course, I dyed all of these separately. They are... Uh, they're all a slightly different shade, but they're similar enough that you can't really tell unless unless you look at it. Uh, I think this one's gonna the top part's gonna go in for another few seconds here, but each piece was in there for less than a minute total. Uh, another thing, just between all the times I've pulled parts out or just the evaporation, my water level has gone down, so I can't even fit these parts in there anymore. I have to kind of dangle them around a wire and, and uh, try and dye them that way. Um, but another another quick addendum, now that I'm thinking about it, I think part of my issue with these here is that I wasn't circulating this water enough. You do got to keep constantly stirring this, otherwise uh, the dye settles and, well, you get that. Um, but I don't know. I. 
probably already said this before, but I, I hope this video was helpful. I hope this get this gets you guys to experiment. Maybe you'll get some better results than I will than I did, or I don't know. Maybe you'll try something different and get something really cool. Um, you can of course try like green dye with pink buttons and see what the hell you get. Personally, I think it'll probably look like garbage, but you know, I could be wrong. Feel free to prove me wrong. And um, well, otherwise, like I said, if you guys have any other ideas, let me know and uh, try it out if I can and we'll go from there. But uh, in the meantime, keep on rocking.